Welcome, so today we are going to perfectly light an iPhone. There are a couple of different tricks. I will explain to you how the power and exposure work. I will explain to you how to use gradients and different types of highlights and contours on the product. And I will also show you how to use light linking in order to get these lenses to look more physically accurate. And doing all of this will yield a pretty cool looking result that I think can fit on Apple's website. All right, so now we have no light in the scene except for this Fresnel. Let's go ahead, press Shift A and bring in the light. It's going to be an area light. It's going to be the first one. And uh, what I want to do is I want to place it on the iPhone. And somewhere over here is probably going to be great for a gradient. And then we can increase the power, but don't make it too much. And you can also make it larger. Now we have this gradient type effect. In the lights, we have power and exposure. And power is basically a linear way in order to progressively increase the power of the light, which speaks for itself. So if you like set this to 60, like it is right now, and then turn it to 120, uh, it will be double the amount of light. And the exposure however works more like a multiplier. Uh, so if I set this to two, for example, you can see that we get a lot more light. Uh, so why is that? So let's have a look at this. 60, 120, this is the difference. Do it back and let's do it times two. It's way brighter, it's actually four times brighter. And the reason for that is if you hover over this, it scales the power of the light exponentially, multiplying the intensity by a two uh, power of exposure. Yeah, it is the power off, so it's kind of confusing right now, but the mathematical term is power if you use a quadratic formula. And basically both are just ways to manipulate lights, but the power sometimes can go up all the way to 10,000 and then you finally have some decent light. Well, I think it's quite annoying to work like that. So they decided to simply use an exposure slider, making it a bit more intuitive and less extreme all of the time. Uh, anyways, it's also what other 3D programs do. So it's also normalizing workflows across 3D programs. Now what I like to add next is some contours to this model. I'm going to place one in the back as well, uh, like this. I'll make sure it comes from the side, like so. and. Uh, well, we can play around with the power, make sure that we get something that looks pretty cool. Let's scale it up as well. There you go. And now we have a cool looking rim light. Uh, now I'm going to follow Apple's own guidelines for this. I've seen quite a few of those product images. Uh, they never have the light come all the way to the bottom. I think they want to preserve some type of gradient, some different type of lighting effects around the model. I'm simply going to follow uh, follow that example. So now that we've reached this stage, let's now do the lenses because we can create some cool looking reflections in this that will make it look a lot more physically accurate. Now, one of the things that you need to do is select the lenses and make their own lens collection. Now, if you've got this model from Gumroad, you already have this. If you don't, please do so. Now we can add some light linking to it. Uh, so what I'll do is quite simple. I'll actually bring in a light. Let's make sure it's a area light and I'm going to rotate this towards one of those lenses. And what I don't like right now is that the entire model is being lit in a very unnatural way. So we're simply going to use light linking in order to solve this problem. So what I will do first is I will place this in a collection called light links, like so. And then I'll go over here, maybe place another one right there. And I will go over there and place a third one right over there. So now we get three lights in our light links. And then we can add the light linking Let's use light links for the lights. Let's use the lenses for the lenses and add light linking. Now, if we toggle this on and off, you can see that these lights have stopped working on the rest of the model, but only work on the lenses. So let's toggle it on so it actually works. And well, there's not that much going on on the lenses if you look at it like this. Uh, but what we want are some harsh highlights that will give us the reflection that's normal to come out of a camera. So what I'll do is simply decrease the spread and that will give us this type of shape. But if you are like me, you probably don't think that the square shape is the most natural way for a lens to reflect things. So I will go ahead and bring in a disc shape and this will make it circular, already makes it look a little bit better. All right, so what you can do now is play around with the exposure and the way this looks. Play around with the spread, you can make it as hard as you like. Uh, something like this probably looks fine. And we can change the shape of this one to a disc as well and simply do the same things again. So spread all the way down, maybe to something like a 10. And uh, of course, do play around with where it is pointing at. And there you go, you can see the reflection existing right there in the lens and uh, maybe upwards a little bit. And if you want this to be a longer stroke, what you can always do is increase the size of the light by scaling it up. Very simple stuff. 
but this does add to the type of reflection that you're going to get. Play around with the exposure and stuff like that. And finally, let's do so for the last slide as well, which is right over here. Square, disc, and uh, let's also make this one a little bit uh, bigger. Exposure all the way up, like so. And that gives us some cool looking lens reflections. Bring it down, you can play around with the size as well. So it will become a harsher reflection if you decrease the size of the disc. Do make sure to play around with the lights until it looks good. Now, one of the things that you can do in order to make this look slightly better, uh, first of all, play around with the lighting power. I'm going to do that later on, uh, but you can change the colors. So you can change the color of this one, for example, to a more reddish tone. And then you have the other one, this can be a more bluish tone, something like this. You see in these cameras, you always have those uh, different types of refractions. And we've got this one, and uh, perhaps uh, this can just remain white or light bluish, something like that. And I think now it's a bit too extreme. You can already see all of these colors coming in here. And uh, well, it, it starts to look too playful, and too fake for me. Uh, so there's two things you can do. You can either play around with the value in the lens itself and make it a whole lot darker. So you get this type of effect. Let's see, increase it. Or you can play around with the lights and make sure it actually looks good, uh, which is what I'm going to do. But there's no point in you uh, having a look at me just playing around with sliders. And now the final thing that you can do is play around with the HDRI. So if you want to have some type of reflection, you can definitely do it. Don't make it too much, but just give it some type of reflection from an HDRI. Uh, you can use Sunset JHB Central, which is one of the best out there, or Shanghai Bund, uh, which is nice for the night scenes. And especially if you use some camera bokeh, depth of field right over here. And now you can get some pretty cool effects in the background as well, if you like to do that. Of course, we're not going to do that because uh, this is just a product render. Now, if you bring in a plane, bring up this backside and bevel this, then we've effectively created a pretty cool looking background. And you can light this separately, once again, using light linking. One of the things that you can do is add a point light right behind the iPhone. Uh, this is a very common uh, technique also in product photography. And you increase the exposure, bring this down so you don't see the floor. And now you have this gradient coming from behind the product. Uh, so that's a very popular way to light products in product photography. Uh, what you can also do is create a gradient by bringing the point light from one side to another, like this. Also quite common. And the reason why this is quite common is because you have to place your lights somewhere, right? So in, in real life product photography, you can't just place your light wherever you want. You have to deal with physics. And of course, all of that is optional. You can also just uh, delete the point light, delete the back plane, and turn this to uh, transparent. Transparent. And then you will also have a pretty good looking iPhone and uh, play around with the HD rise. It will change the look. Citrus Orchid is cool. I like uh, the skies on fire, but mainly for specific use cases. Uh, Shanghai Bund and let's see Sunset JHB Central, which is the GOAT. So that's just a quick way to light a product and especially an iPhone, things with reflective type surfaces. You can use light linking to accentuate certain highlights and features. You can use rim lights and you can use gradients in order to make the model not seem too flat. So I hope you learned a thing or two and if you did, click on subscribe and I highly recommend watching this video next.